Hello, this is Annie Botticelli. Happy New Year. This is your Aquarius report for January 2015. You can go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com or AspiritualSpark.com to see more about my personal and astro astrological coaching and my new 28-day virtual coaching program, both of which are available on a sliding scale. And you can become part of my community by signing up for my free email newsletter. So what is going on in January? There's so much focus on Aquarius for this month. So many things that we have to talk about. So where do we start? Well, it starts with birthdays. So for you, early Aquarius, it's your birthday and, or it's going to be. Um, and so if you haven't watched my reports before, you may not know that birthday wishes are astrological. Birthday wishes are real. You do get birthday wishes. Uh, brilliant astrologer Jan Spiller says you get 10 birthday wishes. And she got it from another astrologer. I have not traced back this myself because I just always have resonated with it and always have done it. And so you can look into it yourself or you can take your 10 birthday wishes and run, whatever, whichever way. But the universe is incredibly receptive to your desires at the time of your birthday. So if your birthday is not at the end of January and it's into February, then be paying attention to this now because so many of the things that I'm going to talk about, you've got them right around the corner. So it's really relevant and you really want to know this stuff beforehand. So the sun in the sky gets back to the point where the sun was in your chart and it creates a portal. It's an open magic receptivity of the universe to your desires. That's what birthday wishes are. So you say them out loud, you write them down, you feel them as if they're coming true. <clears throat> the universe always lines up this very interesting sequence. For the four weeks before your actual birthday, the sun is highlighting your 12th house. Now, it just happens to be that not only the sun is highlighting your 12th house um, at this time, but other planets are highlighting your 12th house. There's just a lot of activity in the 12th house. And the 12th house is the house of the deep psyche, the unconscious mind. And so this is where all the demons lie. This is where all of the sparks for your ultimate fantastic, wonderful creations lie. All of the power resides in that place. And so the sun brings this spotlight. It's a spotlight wherever it goes, and it brings this spotlight the four weeks before your birthday. Many people, a very high percentage of people, will feel funky, will feel weird, will have problems, will have difficulties the month before their birthday. And some people attribute it logically to that mental process we go through of assessing the last year and seeing how we've done and thinking about getting older and the whole aging thing. And maybe there's some truth to that too, but more true is that there's a spotlight on your unconscious mind that makes you ask big questions. So if you know that that's going on, you can use it proactively and that helps you to excavate um, difficult things and remedy them and also helps you to get more clear on what it is you actually want. You have to be clear on what you want in order to be able to create it. So many of your wishes are diluted with uncertainty and ambiguity, ambiguousness. <laughs> and so this time before your birthday is the time to get clear, get really clear through intense inner focus. Besides all of this going on, you're also going to have Mercury going retrograde in your sign. And for those of you whose birthdays are at the end of January and even to the first weekish of, of February, you're going to have Mercury go directly retrograde over your sun. And if your um, other uh, Aquarius placement is at one through 17 degrees, whether it's the ascendant or the moon or whatever, you're going to have Mercury go retrograde over that placement in your chart. So this brings more questions more soul searching, more deep asking. It, this energy in your chart is reminding me of the, the book, um, the, work by, or the Work by Byron Katie. And in that work, she asks you to ask the question about everything, is it even true? Oh, such a glorious question, it's such a deep question. So you can apply this question towards a multitude of things. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of strong prejudices or intolerances. Let's say even on very hot topics like politics and religion, just to go really big and then we can take it down really small. If you are brave enough to ask the question, is this even true? You create more space 
for the universe to work its magic. When there's constriction and tightness, those are blocks to the universal energy and the universal forces to move through you in a coherent way. But when you ask the questions that make you feel bigger, that make you feel looser, um, more expanded, then the universe has more room to work through you and move through you in a way that brings coherence into your life. You've got a great opportunity now for rebirth and redirection and asking those questions about yourself. Let's say you write down a list of things that, that um, are things that people think about you. Maybe they're good things, maybe they're bad things. You can ask the question, are they even true? And if the good things, you can focus on the good things and then see ways you can solidify making them more true or bringing more integrity to them. And the places where someone's making a judgment on you that isn't true, you can work around that. Why are they saying that? Why are you calling that to you? So we're mostly space. The universe is mostly space. And the places where we have the most problems are where there's the constriction, where we're holding on to something. This month, January 2015, this new year, as arbitrary as starting a new year January 1st is, because it is arbitrary, it's not very astrologically supported to have a new year at that point in the astrological cycle, but that's another story. Um, you have this fantastic chance for rebirth. All of these planets that are going to be lighting up your 12th house are going to move into your first house. So you're going through this process of figuring out, going over things, recalculating, reconfiguring, readjusting. And then after those planets move away from the 12th house into the first house, then you're going to be taking action on things. Now the one planet that is already in your first house is Mars. Mars is like a little motor. It hums. It's moving, it's vibrating, and it brings motion and activity and sometimes restlessness and sometimes anxiety, but just a lot of energy and agitation to the field of experience where it is placed or moving through. And for you, while all this stuff is going on with your unconscious mind and crossing over your ascendant or your sun, looking at your identity and asking these big questions, you've got the Mars energy in your physical body. You need to move your body. You will go absolutely stir crazy more than usual, worse than usual, if you do not move your body. This month, you have got to get out. You've got to jump around. You've got to stretch. You've got to hang upside down. You've got to run. And your mental space will always be better when you can get exercise. We know that this is a common truth, but when Mars is in your house of physical activity or physical body, you can have more problems with excess mental and emotional energy because you're just going like this, vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. You also might want to consider supplementing magnesium. Um, Calm is my favorite brand. I'm not a doctor. You have to check the appropriateness for you, and if you're pregnant, you really want to check in and make sure you're not taking too much um, and there might be other circumstances to look at with that. But in general, most people are deficient in magnesium. And magnesium is the great relaxer. It can help you sleep better. It can help to calm your nerves, balance your nervous system. So having that extra support during this time and then getting that physical activity is going to be very beneficial to you with Mars, that little motor running. So Mercury goes retrograde January 21st and it's retrograde through February 11th. The pre-shadow period starts January 5th, so the mischief will start to act up around then. And then the post-Mercury retrograde shadow will run through March 3rd. So this full cycle runs from January 1st, I don't know if you can see the ducks, <laughs> runs through um, January 5th through March 3rd, with the strongest times being the several days before the 21st and the several of January and the several days after February 11th. That's the most concentrated time. So the whole month of January is covered in this Mercury retrograde. And the first three weeks of January have intermittent challenging, there, there are challenging angles that are occurring with intermittent little sweet spots um, called sextiles. They're 60 degree angles. So there's like challenge, challenge, little resolution, challenge, challenge, coming up for air, challenge, challenge, taking a deep breath. And then the last week of January, which is into your birthday time, you've got just a sweet series of beautiful placements, lots of sextiles and a conjunction of Mercury to the Sun on the 30th in Aquarius. All of this is in Aquarius at the end of the month. Um, so just highlighting, strengthening, bringing synergy and synastry that last, that last week. So remember that you're still under the Mercury retrograde umbrella in that last week, 
but a lot of resolution and more peace can come from the challenges that occurred in the beginning part of the month with those sweet serious succession of sweet angles at the end of the month so do your exercises asking the questions is this even true soften the intolerances soften the places of tension ask the big questions ask the little questions try to not commit to too much um, of a long-term nature because much will change say yes to redefining yourself say yes to rebirthing yourself say yes to exercise and call magnesium and I hope you have a wonderful start sleepy sleepy start to your new year if you want some assistance your birthday time is a fantastic time for a personal reading wonderful time it's also a great time to do a vision board by the way one of the best times of the year to do a vision board is on your birthday um, and if you want some assistance then you can find me through my website anyhelpsyou.com or aspiritualspark.com my personal coaching and my 28-day virtual coaching program are both available on a sliding scale to help them be accessible to you. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter, which makes you part of my community, and you will receive additional write-ups for each month before the month happens of details that sometimes I don't have to go, uh, I don't have time to go over in the videos, where you get more supplemental astrological information and other goodies. So I hope you have a great month. Bye.